boys and girls, children of all ages, freaks and geeks, trolls and derps alike. Welcome, welcome all. I am Mullet Mike with the Paddle Gaming Network and Full Screen, bringing you Season 5 of Creepy Gaming. Well, I knew it was going to happen. You knew it was going to happen. After the success of Five Nights at Freddy's and Five Nights at Freddy's 2, a sequel was inevitable. Inevitable! You knew it was going to happen. It was just a matter of time. So today, we will be gearing up for the new attraction that is Five Nights at Freddy's 3. Special shout out to all these fine folks. I want to thank you all so much for your suggestions. If you have a suggestion for Creepy Gaming, be sure to leave them in the comments below. Pros. We're pros. What can I say? Alright, without any further ado, let's kick this season off. Get your pizza and party hats ready because it's time to turn the lights down and the volume up as we journey into some Creepy Gaming. Can't stop blinking. Oh, oh. Two thousand and fourteen was a big year for survival horror games. The genre had somewhat of a resurgence with such games like Daylight or The Evil Within, but it wasn't until indie developer Scott Cawthon decided to change the face of fear. If you are unfamiliar with the games, then please refer back to my previous episodes where I cover the first two games as well as theories, easter eggs, and secrets within. Five Nights at Freddy's 3 was released on Steam in early March 2015. The game has already been topping the charts and has received mixed to positive reviews from critics and players alike. Much like the other games, Five Nights at Freddy's 3 takes place in an all new location. Rather than a children's pizza diner, here you are placed in an all new haunted attraction based on the incidents from the previous Fastbear restaurants. Now I've got to admit, I like this approach. I've always enjoyed haunted houses and attractions, so I'm happy to see this rather than another restaurant rehash. That's just me though. Okay, now follow me on this one because this is where it starts to get real meta. You now play as an employee of the haunted attraction playing the part of the security guy. With me so far? Great, because if you're not, it's only going to get more convoluted from here. Night one, you receive a phone call, but rather than the typical phone guy that we all know and love, now we get this tubular dude. Hey, hey, glad you came back for another night. I promise it'll be a lot more interesting this time. We found some, some great new relics over the weekend, and we're out tracking down a new lead right now. So, uh, let me just update you real quick, then you can get to work. Like, the attraction opens in like a week, so we have to make sure everything works and nothing catches on fire. Uh, when the place opens, people will come in at the opposite end of the building and work their way toward you and past you and out the exit. Uh, yeah, you've officially become part of the attraction. Uh, you'll be starring as... The security guard! So not only will you be monitoring the people on the camera as they pass through, you know, to make sure no one steals anything or makes out of the corner, but you'll also be a part of the show. It'll make it feel really authentic, I think. Uh, now let me tell you about what's new. We found another set of drawings, always nice, and a foxy head, which we think could be authentic. Then again, it might just be another crappy cosplay. And we found a desk fan, very old school, metal though, Watch the fingers. Uh, uh, right now the place is basically just, you know, flashing lights and spooky props. But I honestly thought we'd have more by now. Uh, if we don't have something really cool by next week, then we may have to suit you up in a furry suit and make you walk around saying, boo. <laughs> uh, but, you know, like I said, we're 
trying to track down a good lead right now. Uh, some guy who helped design one of the buildings, he says it was like an extra room that got boarded up or something like that. So we're going to take a peek and see what we can find. Uh, for now, just get comfortable Hello? with the new setup. Um, you can check the security cameras over to your right with the click of that blue button. Uh, you can toggle between the hall cams and the main cam. Uh, then over to your far left, uh, you can flip up your maintenance panel. You know, use this to reboot any systems that may go offline. <laughs> uh, in trying to make the place feel vintage, we may have overdone it a bit. <laughs> Some of this equipment is barely functional. Yeah, I wasn't joking about the fire. That, that, that's a real risk. Uh, the most important thing you want to watch for is the ventilation. Look, this place will give you the spooks, man. And if you let that ventilation go off wide, then you'll start seeing some crazy stuff, man. Keep that air flowing. Okay, keep an eye on things, and we'll try to have something new for you tomorrow night. There you go. Much like the previous games, the initial phone call gives you all you need to know. It lays out the ground rules, sets the tone, and lets you know what you're in for. Something I thought was noteworthy was that the night one phone call starts out with, Hey, you're back. This only raises more questions. So, are you a new employee? Or have you been there for a while? Maybe you quit and came back. Or maybe you got fired. Well, please refrain from asking any further questions until after the episode. Thank you. Thank you. No, I said no further questions! So the basic game mechanics return from the previous two entries with a few interesting twists. Rather than batteries, flashlights, and doors, you are now given a more modern setup. Maybe that's because Five Nights at Freddy's 3 is an actual sequel, set decades after the events of the previous games. It is said that the haunted attraction you're working at has a lot going on with it. The attraction's electrical system is unstable, and your job is to keep all the systems online. This includes the audio, video, and ventilation systems. So like previous games in the series, this one gives you plenty to juggle with. On the second night, we are introduced to the new breakout star of the series, The Spring Trap. It is revealed by the new phone guy that the haunted house acquired one of the actual animatronics. Unfortunately, it was the notorious Golden Bonnie, dubbed Springtrap. It's interesting to note that this is actually the only animatronic in the game, technically. Again, note, technically. This doesn't mean you won't see your favorite characters return. Phantom versions of the classic cast are back, but only as hallucinations, or at least ghostly apparitions. Ugh, with all these phantoms running around, there's probably a phantom mullet mite, too. That, that's not a joke. There better not be a phantom mite! I'll admit, when I first heard there was only going to be one animatronic, I was skeptical. But overall, it was executed very well. When the aforementioned ventilation system goes offline, your character begins to black out, causing you to see a moving Phantom Freddy, Chica, Foxy, Mangle, the Puppet, and even Balloon Boy. These animatronics will deliver plenty of jump scares, but won't cause you any harm. Luckily, you can use the audio system to distract and lure Springtrap as long as it stays online. Clicking the audio button cues a Balloon Boy sound effect that will grab the animatronic's attention. He has to be nearby or else he won't hear it. This adds a new gameplay dynamic that I feel adds to the overall experience. Keeping the video system online is self-explanatory. This is strictly for the surveillance system. The major difference regarding the security cameras is now you have two sets to view. There is a typical ground level surveillance as well as a new system dedicated entirely to the ventilation shafts. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute! Why is there a camera system in the events of a haunted attraction? I mean, I get it with Five Nights at Freddy's too, you got Balloon Boy running around and all, but this haunted attraction didn't even own an animatronic until the second or third night. What's really going on here? Why are there cameras? What ventilation system do you know of that needs cameras? The game's difficulty is much more user-friendly than a panic fest that was Five Nights at Freddy's 2. Don't get me wrong though, this game gets difficult enough as the nights roll on. I just feel like the difficulty has been curbed and is a little more balanced than the last. 
The same styles of scares return. We have tension and psychological terror. There is your standard issue jump scares, eerie environments, chilling sound design, but I think most will agree that the true terror in the game lies in the backstory. And let's just say this game actually gives a bit more closure. Completing Five Nights at Freddy's 3 will answer many players' questions, but not before raising a few more. Overall, I've really enjoyed Five Nights at Freddy's 3. The tone was darker, the setting was spooky, and Springtrap was a great nightmare-inducing addition. The game wasn't as difficult or as clustered as the second, the camera layout worked well, the Phantom animatronics ruined what little childhood I had left, and overall, I just had fun playing it. That's what I look for. Oh, come on now, guys. You don't know me very well. Of course, of course I'm going to go over the Easter eggs and secrets. This first part was a spoiler-free section, if you will. That way, if you haven't played it, you still can and enjoy it. But join me in part two, when we will cover Five Nights at Freddy's 3, Secrets, Easter Eggs, and Hidden Meanings. I think that's going to do it for me today, folks. I want to thank you all so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed. Hi, I'm Mother Mike with us. On full screen saying, you stay creepy. Thanks for watching. Peace. Thanks, guys.